you um how many times have you done the protocol this is the sixth time okay so and um we are what midway through our sessions we're probably in session six or seven does that sound about right it's in my calendar so i don't i think we're on seven yeah, yeah. And um, you have dieted for forever. When did you start dieting? Uh, I was in February. Yeah. Mile thirteen. Okay. So, <clears throat> can you see just really when you observe the whole thing? Can you see that's why you got as big as you did? The big, yes. yeah, yeah, because it's the same cycle of I have to fix this. There's pressure behind fixing it because losing weight means that you'll have freedom in life. Losing weight means you'll be happy. It'll fix your marriage. It'll make your parents proud. Think of the pressure behind that, right? Right. It it means that I am um I am achieving something. And so, how many how much weight? What's been your highest weight? 280. 280. And you, we could say in gaining that much, right? Over 100 to 100 and you could say, how tall are you? 5'3". Five, 5'3"? Three. Five, three? Five, yeah. we, we'll keep the half. 5'3 and a half. So at 5'3 and a half, <laughs> your lean body's probably close to 100 pounds. So add 30 pounds to that. We could say a natural roughly... 130 pounds would be like ideal. And so if you're 280, that's about 150 pounds of to 130 pounds of excessive fat, right? So we could assume that as you're gaining, you lost two. Going up to 280 pounds, how much how many times did you lose on your way to getting up to 280? Like lots and lots. You could say how how old are you? Forty five. So you're forty five. You started dieting around fifteen. So we could say it's thirty years. And in thirty years, gaining to gain two hundred and eighty pounds, you had to lose. Would you say hundreds of pounds? Oh yeah. So most people don't when they see someone. That is 200, 300, 400 pounds. They just assume these people don't know what's in their food. They they don't care about their weight, that they don't have any self-discipline, that you're completely uneducated, that you're totally lazy, that you don't care enough, that you have mental problems, right? Right. Okay. But so I've been dieting for so long, and I know, like... When I see someone, right, when I see someone that's that that has that much body fat, you know what I see? That much dieting. That is how much this person has literally starved themselves. That's why when I said that to you, I'm like, how many times did you have to lose weight to gain that much weight? Because every time you lose, don't you agree that you think, I and then you're proud of it every time you lose the weight. Oh yeah. You're proud. You're so proud of yourself every time and people say you're going to feel so happy when you lose the weight and you get there and you're using it like, "Oh, look at me." And people are like, "We're so proud of you." And but you don't feel good. Plus the way you're doing it isn't good. So you have this body that everybody says is amazing. But you know that you actually don't like what you're doing to get it. It feels depriving. You feel like food is being withheld from you. There's fear of social events, so you can't go out. And then in a moment, stress, you want to you want to get your food back. Plus, right. plus, now that you've lost weight, you have cushion to gain. No, when you hear that, see, so you went, oh, my God, this is so ridiculous, right? But it's real and it's true, and that's how it feels because what you're doing is you're negotiating now for just some sort of pleasure with food because you've been deprived. You didn't go to that event. You didn't eat at that event. You didn't, ex 
experience the food when you went on vacation. So now here we are and you're stressed out. All of a sudden you're like, you know what? Uh, being this weight doesn't really, I don't want to have to do what it takes. So I'm going to give myself lenience to gain some of it back because I just, for now, I just want to enjoy food. Right. Okay. And that's how you gain. And then, right, if you used your body or fat loss as a way of saying, look at me, I've lost weight. Now there's embarrassment because you socially exposed it. Right. So if people... So yeah, so as you're giving yourself lenience to gain, there is this other part of it, which is, oh, wow, people will see that I've gained it back. So they'll realize that all of what I did was a total lie. Like me being um, capable of it is a facade. It was a lie. I'm not capable of it. So then there's feeling of I feel bad. There's loathing. There's embarrassment. And there's a level of hiding that goes into when you regain the weight, even though you needed to gain the weight to give yourself this ability to survive with food. Right. Right. So we were just talking about, um, because we have, we've done these sessions and that you had that moment of total freedom where you didn't see your body as a, as, um, a catastrophic thing. You saw it as something that was good enough. It was the for the first time since you were 15, you actually felt good. Right. There was no yeah. pressure to diet. There was no diet. You got that freedom. And then yeah. something happened. Then something happened. And this is so common. People come out and they they go back in. And part of that going back in, right, to this, my body sucks, I need to fix it. Part of that... I think is such a necessary part of the process because once you get out, you're, you're aware of how you get out. It's like, it's, it's unconditional love to the body and changing your perceptions around what's bad, right? Bad is getting in a car wreck and being a quadriplegic. Bad is getting burns all over your face and losing your nose and ears. You know, bad is actually having a, uh, uh, not being able-bodied, but even so, able-bodied people are so happy, or uh, be, people who are disabled, people who have major physical problems, how are they happy, right? So how do we, how do they surpass this belief in with such catastrophic physical circumstances relative to the person who's able-bodied like yourself, right? Are you with me? Right. So you have to really. Up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's so. It's the internet. Okay, so what happened for you is you got sucked. Was, you got sucked back in. Accepted that that's what they are. Yeah, they yeah, and they yeah. they they reject the standard. So they accept where there are where they are but they reject the standard. They reject this beauty model. Like, I don't have to be beautiful to be a good person. I'm a good person. Agreed? Yeah. Yeah. So, there, you get out, how do you get sucked back in? So, that to me is the, 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 the required, it's a re like a requirement for you to really understand this. You know how to get out, but how is how do people get sucked into this? How do people get sucked back in? How did you get sucked back in? That's a different, right? And uh, don't you agree that's something that you might not have been aware of? You knew how to get out, but what are the things that make people go back into needing to lose weight, to feeling like my body's not good enough? So a lot of times I'll say, a, a wedding, having the ideology of a wedding picture and getting these are permanent pictures. There's a, a level of permanence in the vision of the body that can suck people back into it. Vacation. There's this illusion with body image, right? In a variety of different circumstances. Yeah. Okay. One of the things that you just said, because you had gotten sucked back in and then you jumped on the protocol, but before and we're going to come back to this, I'm going to come back to this moment because we need to talk about the excessive eating that went ahead of it, right? Okay. 
because that that's important. We're going to come back to that. So you got onto this protocol feeling, I got to lose this weight. You have a wedding coming up. So we could say, well, that makes sense. However, what you're doing created problems that are now having to be fixed. So you have to wonder why are problems being created that now have to get fixed? That's, you got sucked in, right? Yeah. So now you're eating and the suffering has come back. Yeah. And then, so you had said, okay, I really can see the connection now between the pride I had. I, I lost a hundred pounds. Right. So in losing a hundred pounds, you you liked telling people I've lost a hundred pounds. Uh, I don't like to admit it, but yes. <laughs> well, I'm gonna flip this here. You don't like to admit it, but the truth of the matter is, you took pride in that. You said I've lost a hundred pounds, right? I went from two eighty to one eighty. But you know what the truth is? If you really actually calculate how much weight you've lost in your lifetime, how much do you think you've lost maybe five, six hundred pounds in your life? Probably. Yeah. Can you hold on for a second? Yep. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, if you really think about it, if you actually sat back and thought, okay, the amount of times I remember losing weight, if you added it all up, You've lost that one time at, at 100 pounds, but how many two, how many times have you lost 15 pounds? I could I could begin to guess. I mean, 10 I've times? been on so many diets and so many programs and lost and gained, and I, I couldn't even begin to guess. So, can we assume over a 30-year period of time you can take that 100 pounds, and then and that happened in what a one-year period of time on the protocol? Okay, so one year, so 29 years of dieting. So you could assume, let's say you gained and lost 20 pounds 29 times. Sure. Okay. That's just one time a year, gained and lost one time a year. That doesn't include multiple times. So we're just, you know, conservatively saying, you actually, you could stand up on a pulpit and say, I have successfully lost close to 700 pounds. It might even be over a thousand pounds in my lifetime. I'm amazing. Oh my gosh. A thousand pounds. Yeah. Well, well, that's where the shame comes in. If you have pride over what you've lost, if you actually internalize it as something that makes you valuable or special or something that creates um, it creates an illusion that you have a special gift that you have the gift of weight loss okay. well it's true I mean you have to get real with this why is it a gift what makes it a gift why would someone believe that they have a gift of weight loss that enough that says look I'm so amazing I did it Well, it's because you had to with you have to live in suffering to do it. Oh right. Yeah. Uh, that's freaking amazing. You are living in hell and suffering for a lot. For a thousand pounds of starvation. You starved worth a thousand pounds. Uh I would be proud too. Because you're literally starving and depriving yourself of pleasure and you're depriving yourself of culture. You have literally mutilated your spirit to accomplish it. Tell me how that feels. <laughs> well, no crap, right? Because your spirit has been beat up. Look, the spirit's tiny. It's withered away. But look at my body. I've lost over a thousand pounds in my life dedicated to this. And I have suffered and starved and avoided social... It's, it's an accomplishment. Because that's the truth. That's why it feels like an accomplishment. Because you want to know something? It is. But the truth of it is you didn't even do it. The body did. The body did all that work. 
It's the one that had to metabolize everything. It's the one that had to sit through starvation. It's the one that had to go through you reducing food and changing your food and not eating when it told you to and eating when you didn't want to eat and drinking shakes and taking in cabbage and drink, drink. I mean, it had to go through all of that too. For what? Yeah, For better. someone to say, oh my God, bravo. You must be so proud. Yay. <clears throat> so it's understandable when you're in it, why you would be feel so proud of it. But the, but the most manipulative part, don't you agree? When you said to me, it's really, it's got to be, it's this thing I lost. I can't tell people I lost a hundred pounds anymore. That's killing me because right. Mm -hmm. That's what you said. Yeah. So yeah. the payoff for you wasn't even yours. It was the fact that you got people's approval and you recognize that. It's the people who are out there, and this is what I find really fascinating. The people who are giving you approval, do they know the type of suffering that goes into it? No. And if they do, because they're dieter dieters, if they do, they're not even conscious how literally how awful it is. They just think that you should live in suffering. That's part of it because being thin is so amazing. It's worth it. So worth it, right? People who don't diet, they have no idea what it's like to have to have shame and guilt and fear around food. They don't know, have a clue what it feels like to be isolated from culture, to be within the culture, like going somewhere and not being able to be involved because you can't have pasta salad. They have no idea what that feels like. So they're just, they, they yeah. just assume, wow, I mean, good for you. You are happy. We're happy for you. Right? So have you ever considered too, like the fact that People are proud of that 100 pounds is the fact that they just are not, they don't even know what's going into it. Um, like I met with someone who is a severe orthorexic, okay? Do you know what orthorexia is? I know I've mentioned it in my videos. Um, do you remember, did you hear me talking about the orthorexic that I work with? Yeah, tell me again what that means. Someone who's obsessed with health. Oh, okay. Through food. They think food is 100% health and survival, so they almost micromanage food to the point where it actually threatens their life. Okay. So they eliminate tons of food groups. They have a lot of fear, and they have a lot of righteousness in their eating to a fault. Um, gotcha. But this person also has, I would agree, I think she's also has anorexia and bulimia and anyway so long story short she's she's uh in she has followers that tell her you're such an inspiration and she posts pictures of her you know with her fitness body and whatnot but she's so they worship her they're literally looking at her like she's a goddess but what did what do you think it's taking for her to m maintain this facade or this front what is it requiring on her end Misery, starving, lots of work. Obsession. I mean, so she's yeah. mentally, she's mentally ill doing what, <clears throat> so that she can stay on the pedestal. Like right. she is suffering horrendously. And she now has started to binge, right? And how do you think it feels to her... How do you think it feels too as she's trying to hoard food that she is, that is so bad because health is so important because that's what she's presenting. I am the figure of health, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. When you hear that, you're like, whoa. But you know, don't you, don't you know that what you eat is what makes people healthy? I mean, I'm, I'm eating all these macros and there's a lot of science backing, you know, the ketogenic diet and I represent that health because that's the most important thing to your health 
right? Mm-hmm. And my fitness. I mean, I am like, I never starve myself, ever. But yet, what do you think she's doing in the fact that she's attaching so intensely to a very star- starved type of environment? All about the way you look and the pedestal of she's so healthy, right? And she, it, to, but it's all based on how she looks and the way she's eating. But yet, both of which are causing so much damage to her own life and her own psycho. This is what where I was. Okay, it's so, psychologically the most detrimental thing to her health to actually be using this platform of health. Do you see where I'm saying? But it's all for people to tell her, you are such an inspiration. Do you think the people who say that understand what it takes for her to be healthy? No. And is it really healthy? No. No, but you want to know why? It's because they're defining the health by the food regimen she's eating because there's so much science to back it and the way she looks with her fitness. She's a she's a exercise physiologist, so the fitness you can imagine is not just it's not just you know uh, uneducated. <laughs> Say that again. I said it's not like a half hour cardio a day. It's like probably hours and hours of working out a day. Well, yeah. Well, and, and she's a trainer, right? So this is what she does, and her and, and as a trainer, she's helping people become take care of themselves and and to eat healthier. Right, but what she's preaching, what do you think has happened? Her religion, how is it working for her? Not very well. No, so she's telling people to eat the way she eats and to exercise the way on some level she is, and how's it working for her? So um, you've got to wonder, right, that these people that we look at for health that they might be giving you the poison that's killing them, them help, their health. But because yeah. we only define health on the pedestal from the religion of food you do, you eat, combined with, right, the religion of exercise you do, and it's all based on the facade of the way you look, right? With uh-huh. that said, the point being, this girl is worshipped. She has it. She has that body. But the means that she's using to be healthy are so destructive and poisonous and not healthy at all. Yes. Okay, so when you look at how much weight you've lost, don't you agree that you've been put on a pedestal and you loved it? However, the means to get there, was it healthy? No. Okay, so were you really healthy 100 pounds ago? You were healthy 100 pounds ago? Really? Um, Are you defining it just by the way you looked and the 100 pounds? Or because you forgot about all the destruction it took to get there. And don't forget the psychological illness that it took to get there. And all of the damage that it caused. Mentally, emotionally. I lost 100 pounds. Sorry. Say that again? I thought you meant before I lost 100 pounds. No, I'm saying, let me ask, let me ask the question again. Okay. A hundred pounds ago, would you say that you were healthy? That that was healthier? Looking back, was that healthier? No. Don't you agree when you see that? You could say there's a hundred pounds from here to here. And what it's what's between that here to here is so insane and unhealthy. Yes. So that 100 pounds, is it really something that should be admonished and put on a pedestal? When what it took was so catastrophic and destructive and abusive. No. If people knew what it takes to have the ideal or right or what you would, would they have put it on a pedestal or would they have said, oh my God, I can't believe she did that to herself. I can't believe that's. Like, have you ever watched The Biggest Loser and been like, really, this is so abusive what these people are doing? This is not okay. Have you ever seen that and, and witnessed that and seen it from the outside? Yes. And the fact that they're putting the weight loss on a pedestal is even worse? Yeah. Okay. Because, and they don't see it. 
They don't see it. So when you look at the behavior, right, of you feeling pressure to then maintain this, I've lost 100 pounds because that's what people look at me and praise me for. Can you see why that pressure manifested in this last round that you jumped into? Yes. Okay, so let's go back. I, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna. I want to go back now to. And I remember you had messaged me, and I said, "When she said, because you were you were like, I'm getting on the protocol," and I was like, "Oh my god! As soon as someone just messages me that, I know that there's been hardship." And they didn't talk to me. You realize you paid me to go through the, get through the hardship, right? <laughs> it's like you paid me a lot of money and you're not even using me where I'm good. I'm really good at that part. But so when someone does that, it's like, okay, they're dieting and they're binging. They're either, and it might not even have been binging. It's this excessive eating that happens before the diet. So we can see you, I already knew as soon as you said I'm going on the protocol that you'd been feasting because now you have to do the protocol to get rid of the feast damage, right? Right. And I said to you, so I was like trying to get you to stop, right? Because I'm trying to say, if you're going to do, if you need to heal, we've got to heal it now. You've got to get rid of the escape route. You've got to get rid of your narcotic. You're taking your drugs. So can you not take your drugs so you can face the demons? And and I'm open-minded and you said, you know what? I, I need to do it because I'm, I got to fit in my dress. Now I'm in a position where I, I got I can't even fit in my dress. So I'm like, I understand. That's understandable from that perspective. I will support you. Let's do it. You can do it. Let's get through this and then we'll deal with the, the issues on the back end, which is harder, right? Because now you've lost weight and now we have to keep you from defending that loss. Anyways. And you had messaged me a week later and said, I can't. I'm done. I'm not going to do the protocol. You were right. Right? Yeah. So. Uh -huh. And I'm so proud of you, by the way, for recognizing that this sucked. It sucks. It sucks. You were suffering again. You were in your suffering. So I'm starving. I can't do that. No, and it's, I know, right? This is like, this is the suffering. You are now suffering to prove the wedding dress and to prove the 100 pounds for whatever it is. But I said to you this, go back to your feasting. Would you have feasted if you knew that this was, that the protocol wasn't going to work for you? No. I know, right? It's like you did all that eating for nothing. Now you have the ramifications and you're stuck with them. Uh, yeah. I know. It's like, wow. Okay, so what does this tell you about how elusive dieting is in terms of the cause of the excessive eating? It's an enabler and a cause. You wouldn't have done this if you knew that there was no diet to fix the damages. You wouldn't have never even given yourself the freedom to do it. Right. Because you don't want the damages. You don't want to hurt your body. But the weird thing is as soon as you say, all right, I have a diet, it's like you don't even think you're causing problems. But it's because you believe that the problems will get swept under a rug or erased, right? You think that it's going to get erased. So you do it only thinking that you're going to get, you're going to get away with it. So, yeah. It, and doesn't it just burn when you realize that you can't get away? You don't even want to to erase it anymore because it causes so much suffering to have to erase it. It's like way more work than it's worth. And you know what I find fascinating is that you, you wanted to do the protocol. And the protocol is so easy. It's so easy and you know it. So how is the protocol, which is the easiest thing on the face of the planet, causing so much suffering for you. It was, it was, I felt deprived. Uh, well, and deprivation is psychological. It's not uh, physical. And that's what I mean by physically. The protocol is like, seriously, it's the easiest thing ever. You want to, it's like, it's like cheating on someone and then saying, I'm sorry. And them going, okay, that's fine. Like, how are you so forgiving, right? The protocol is so forgiving so easily. and But yet, don't you agree that the deprivation comes from the fact that you have literally starved for 30 years? You've been starving for 30 years. How do you like it now? Would you say that you're more sensitive to, to feeling starved than you would, than reality is? 
Yes, probably. Emotionally feeling punished. You feel there is a condition of I'm being punished, I'm being withheld, I don't get to enjoy my life, I have to sit here and starve, I can't participate, everybody else in the world doesn't have to deal with this, no one else has to starve themselves, but I do, because I have to be on that pedestal. I have to prove that what I did was so worthy, right? It's the suffering, psychological suffering. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that's so such an important lesson, and you needed this. That to me, having this for you in this process is it's so important for you to truly break free from it, to see it for what it is, and it's all for proving something through the way you look. Like it's all for proving that you can starve enough to be thin enough for someone to say you're thin enough now. You've lost enough weight for us to be proud of you. Think of that. You're, you've been living in starvation and deprivation from culture and from life for 30 years so that someone can be proud of the, how much fat you have. Yeah, that sounds pretty silly. Well, doesn't it feel that way? Doesn't it feel awful? Doesn't it feel like this is not okay? This is wrong. No one should be held to this. Not, there's not one person who is so fat that they should have to do this. Yeah, I agree. So, and when you look at someone who is actually so fat, you go, wow, that person has starved themselves up to that point. It doesn't just show up. They're not naive. They're not, they don't, it's not that they don't understand nutrition. <laughs> the amount of work it takes to get that big is obsession over food. They know what they're doing. They know everything about food. It has nothing to do with their lack of knowledge, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's not even a lack of self-control because the, the funny thing is that in 30 years, how, how long have you been living in extreme self-control? That's the suffering. Wouldn't you say most of your life has been in severe constraints to fix yes. this? Mm -hmm. More than the offset or let me see, the compensation. More, the, more so, you've been living in constraints more than you have the actual relief of it, which is the binging. That's the pressure breaking out, right? Yeah. You live in a tiny box most of the time, and then there's moments where you need relief from the pressure of it. But then you always go back to that tiny box, not realizing that that builds so much pressure that you're going to break out of it again. And the breaking out of it, the, the, the physical ramifications of breaking out of that box are made so much severe the smaller the box you're in. Right, the more pressure from being in a tiny box creates a more severe blow up. Oh yeah, definitely. And and the physiologically, that creates actually more physically sensitive. You're more sensitive to the blow up than you would if you had the same binge with a big box. That's the funny thing. So when I'm so that's why can you see Connie why I say. We're going to get rid of any constraints. That way there's no pressure. There is no box anymore. You're not in a box. Yes, yeah, I get it. And that means there's no pressure. <clears throat> and what happens to your binging? Immediately. Like it's instant. Don't you agree? It's, it's, it's instantaneous. Yeah. Yeah. But as soon as you have this tiny little box, what happens? You feel deprived and you want to eat everything. Yeah. Now right. let's. I I want to make sure that we have a very clear identi identify where that when that box begins. Don't you agree that that box began when you said I need to lose this weight? Oh yeah. So it didn't begin when the box was actually implemented. It began the moment you said at some point I'm going to go back into the box. Yeah. Which is that cave that feels so bad. It is so dark, but I have to go back into that box because I need to lose weight so I can say I've lost 100 pounds without feeling like I'm lying. When in reality, you could say I've lost over 1,000 pounds in my life. Right? Yes. So the moment you feel I'm going to get put back, I'm going to get put back in that tiny box that I've lived most of my life. I'm going to go back there. What happens to your feeding behavior? Because in that box, you starve. 
and it's dark and it's very isolating. That's the dieting. It's very dark and isolating, isn't it? And everybody yeah. says, but you'll be healthy in your box. It's so much healthier to be in that box. And you go, you're right. Okay, yeah, maybe I'll be healthier. I'll do it. I'll do it. And you go into that dark, cold box. And you're literally rocking back and forth like, oh, my God, oh, my God, how long can I handle this? I'm in isolation. All for someone to say you look good when you come out of it. Oh, look at you. You 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 look good. I will approve of you now. You're approvable. Yeah. That's to you realize that's torture. That's you could look at this and say that is emotional raping and emotional torture. Yeah, and you can just change everything with pers perspective too. It's like that's in instantly. It's like saying I don't believe that that box is healthy. Don't give me your your diet mongering. That's not healthy. That tiny box is not healthy. Trust me, I've lived there for thirty years. And, and don't tell me that by having less body fat that I'll be healthier because that's, that, reme that means that you're saying I, it requires a diet. And that is so unhealthy. Yeah. And Especially mentally. the client yeah. I have that's got anorexia, orthorexia, bulimia, binge eating, she's in that box in her tiny little frail body. And people are worshiping her, but she lives in that box. How do you think she's doing? In her perfect, tiny, healthy body. How do you think she's doing? Not very well mentally. No, well, she's dying. She's, she's, she's dying. <laughs> she, it's a form of death. She's literally dying in her own, her in the box she worships. She actually worships that box and tells everybody, come into this box. It's amazing. As she's literally insane in it. She's telling people to come in with her. And you have people who have, are living in that box saying, you need to come in this box because when you do, you'll be so much healthier and people will approve of you. They'll be so proud of you when you lose all that weight. But you know what? This box, it's like, it's really important for you because you need the control. You obviously don't have enough control. You cannot live outside of this box. Look at you, you piece of shit. You're fat. Obviously, you can't handle it. So you need to be in a box. I left that box and I said, <laughs> and I'd rather be fat. I'd rather wear a moo moo than to be in the box. Because that box is wrong. It's not good. And to sit there and use and idolize a thin body to, to motivate people to go into that isolation is disgusting. But there is compassion. These people are mentally ill, and that's why they don't see it. And it's my, I obviously um, believe in that freedom from the box so much that I, this is what I do. I'm trying to teach you to stop going into that box because it's awful. And to do that, you have to love the body you're in. You have to break free from believing that the ideal body and everybody's praise. If you get ego from people praising you, guess what you're a slave to? Guess what I'm what? A slave to. Uh, the, you're a slave uh, to their praise. You need their praise, right? Yes. And now you have to do what they want you to, and you have to go in the box so that they can give you a, a, a praise and worship you and to tell you yeah. you're amazing. So you've got to really look at what is the risk. That's why I stopped vlogging. Say that again? That's why I stopped vlogging. Because you can see that if they're giving you praise, that you now have to have it to like there, it's like you're, it's almost like how do I motivate myself to stay in this isolated box? Of suffering. Well, maybe if people like me more or give me praise, that'll motivate me. I need people to uh, tell me it's worth it because I'm suffering so much that I have to have support to motivate it. And so as people give you support, 
what happens if you if you leave the box is you feel like they're going to equally reject you. Yes. So the risk of you saying, I don't care, is that you say, and I would rather you reject me. I'd rather you think that I'm I am being misled. And that I think that is the grieving that I went through. It was like, oh my gosh. Now I have to like stop lying and they're gonna know the real me and you know, and 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 they'll be exposed to the truth of the suffering that this causes. This is like, this is like leaving a religion. You've done this before. I know. You are. You have to be willing to be stones. You have to be receptive to having stones hit you and be thrown at you from people who think that their tiny box is better than life without a box and they judge people who don't live in a box you have to say I would rather you judge me and criticize me and throw stones at me and think I'm a bad person because that is so much better than being in that box with you you don't want to be captive to their opinions anymore so you yeah. have to be willing to be shunned and judged and their opinions being thrown at you. And you have to really think, wow, these people, if they're willing to poison, have poisonous thoughts about you, how poisonous their brains are. Yeah. And if I'm you, always... go ahead. Well, I've just always been a people pleaser, and I just I have to get out of that mentality. And what are you not, gonna have to What are you gonna have to do? Not feel like I have to be a certain way for somebody to like me, and you know, just be me and not worry about it. Yeah, well, I I agree. Um, you do need to just be yourself. You need to be willing to say, okay, here here I am, and. I think it also requires that you look at the identity you've created that might not have been even real for you. It was real because you thought um, you had some weird beliefs around what it should be like, right? Like you have to really look at how you believe you are and do you in, in, in your identity. You have to be very clear as to the truth, right? If, uh -huh of really what is the identity you are and want to be and what you want to present that is so truthful that's not pretending to be something other than the the reality that you are right so it's right. like saying well it's kind of like an identity crisis when someone's having an identity crisis it's not necessarily a truth crisis it's a crisis to this personality they presented or thought they were Right? It's like, that's not actually me. It's been fake the whole time. And I don't want to be that anymore. And my whole life was created around some personality that I created. Like the religion I was, this thing that I was playing, this like role that I played. It's not even real and I don't want to be it anymore. So I have to dismantle this role. It's not even the truth. And the only reason why I took it on is because I thought I'd get attention and because I thought I'd have this and that and all these luxuries. And I don't want the luxuries anymore because I cannot stand another second being something that's not true to me. So if these people only like you for the, that role, you the only way out of the role is to accept that they might not like you when you leave it. This is like when I decided I was not going to be a certain religion. I had to accept that the parents that raised me in that religion, the siblings that were also indoctrinated in it, would judge me as being unworthy and, 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 and ruining something that was so important to their identity. I no longer wanted the same identity. I still loved them. I still wanted to be in the family, but I no longer wanted to be the identity that they thought I needed to be to be a good person. I just wanted to be myself. And that's where you're at right now. Yeah. You have to be very... I want to in certain areas, but not this area. 
you know, I, and can you see that maybe at different times you left certain roles, but you thought, okay, well, what I'll do to make up the difference is I'm going to physically be, they'll be proud of me if I can be healthy. Right? Well, why did be, body image become such a vital part of your survival? Right? That survival part of the brain said, I have to have this to make up the difference. Yeah, it wasn't so much for my family as it was for just people, like friends, I mean. Do, would, you, would you say that it, it, it too was for yourself? Like, well, the, like, I need it for me. I need to prove that I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm I need, myself, yeah. yeah, and maybe the benefits of having other people's approval was good, but in, in reality, maybe you transferred this, I, I don't want to do that anymore, and they can reject and judge me. So I want to feel good about myself, and this is something that can make me feel proud. Yeah. That's what I did. Because my eating issues started really, my is actually body image issues, started becoming important to me when I felt like I I couldn't survive in, my, in that culture anymore. Like I couldn't breathe. I, I couldn't live in it because it was it just I couldn't stand another second so in as I retreated from it psychologically without anybody knowing I started to think well if I can maintain this beauty then I have something of worth because I no longer want that worth uh -huh. right I have something right. of worth and part of that worth requires other people worship you yes that was partly mine too it was me that wanted it it was mine Right. But part of that was in relation to others, I wanted to have something of value. And being thin is worshipped. Being fit is worshipped. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Having the perfect abs is worshipped. So I will have it for me, but it certainly required other people think that I was valuable. Yep. So where we can re, re go, we need to go back and say, well, if you could do this again, what do you, do you really want for you? What is what you need for you to feel good? And re, and make it something that doesn't require approval from anybody. Or disapproval or approval, right? You can have disapproval and approval and it doesn't affect how you feel. Yes. For, for I, don't, I don't know why that is so hard for me, but yeah, that's what I need to do. Yeah, well, it's independence. That's what that is. It's like if you... You have to find an independent way to approve of yourself and to feel sufficient. You know what I mean by that? Uh, I do, I do. You have to say, if the world were to end and I was left one of the only people alive, am I good enough to, to carry on the species? <laughs> I know, right? Get down to it. Am I can I am I a good person to teach to teach just being kind and loving and working and and being a good, you know, human? Do I would I really start religion over again? Would I would I start telling people they need to wear a certain piece of clothing to be valuable or they need to be they need to be secure in their thinness and praise people who are thin and if someone's fat, we should tell them they need to go inside a tiny box until they're thin and then come out. No. I know. It's like, what would you, how would you navigate your life if there was nothing to tell you how to do it? It's just you. Are you good? Could you handle that? Are your feelings, are they, are they worthy of being honored? Yeah, they are, but I have to, I have to keep myself in check all the time. Like, Okay, I really am important. I really am, what you know. Okay, that keeping check is a sign that you actually still believe all the crap around you. <laughs> you shouldn't have to keep in check and convince yourself. You're convincing yourself that you're good enough. That means that you still hold yourself to these beliefs. So what you're going to have to do is say these beliefs are wrong. They don't work for me. I don't, you know, sure, they can work for someone else. I don't have to judge them for having those beliefs. They can have the freedom of those beliefs if that's what makes them feel good. They should do that. I don't necessarily have to do the same thing because 
I can't afford to. I need to honor my feelings. What color do I like? What music do I like? Those feelings are worthy of honor. This is the truth of me. And if someone doesn't like it, that's okay. That just means that they think that I should believe the same way they do. That's a sign of ego. They have an ego with what they believe. They think what they believe is the only thing that there is, right? Uh -huh. And that's their lot in life they're going to have to deal with. You have to honor the brokenness of them, of you relative to them. You have to say, sure, relative to every belief out there, I suck. There is no perfection in anything. So you suck relative to everything. Isn't that okay? Are you good enough with that? Am I good enough without them? No, with with the fact that you, can you say relative to everything, I'm a failure. I'm a failure. I admit it. I failed. I failed this religion, that religion, this belief system. I am a complete, utter failure. Would I say that? No. No. What What do you think the benefit is to actually admitting that? I failed. I am sucky at everything. What's the benefit of that? There's not one. Oh, it's huge. No, you you need to reverse this because if you admit you are a failure to everything, what does that provide you? No responsibility? You, it's called freedom. Oh. It's like saying, I lost this game. I am. I will never win it. I've lost it. What does that give you? No pressure. You're free from it. It means that you don't have to prove yourself within it. You just... Say, I am a complete failure. I will tell you this. I am a failure at everything I do. You know what that gives me? Freedom from the ideal of it. I can just now be truthful about where I'm at. If I come out of this and say, I suck relative to some someone's personal belief of idealism, I totally am failing it. I failed. What does that give me from the idealism? Freedom yeah, I from it. I no longer have to prove myself and focus my energy on that one thing. As soon as you believe you have to prove yourself, you have focus on that one thing. It completely distracts you. It's spiritually distracting. Right? Uh -huh. Do you see now it's like when you, it's like going into some competition with someone who's competing with you and you just want to have fun. You just want to have fun, right? That's your goal. Fun. And their goal is to win. Right off the bat, you know what you should just say? You win. Totally. You can have it. You're so amazing. Let's give you everything you need. Oh, my God. You're the winner. <gasps> you won and I lost. Guess what you now have? The freedom to have fun. Mm-hmm. It removes you from any program that tells you you have to prove yourself with this program to say that you're good. Do you know what that does? You know those boxes we talked about? If you admit that you failed at every single box that exists, you suck at it, you failed it, you're not perfect, you can't do it. If you just believe, I don't really, uh, relative to every tiny box that exists, I suck. Say that again. They go away, right? Yeah, you suck at all of them. When do you just say, relative to all the perfectionistic tiny little boxes that say you have to focus and isolate everything on this tiny box, what is the benefit of saying, oh, I'm not, I, I'm just inadequate for the box. I'm, I failed your box. I'm a failure in your box. Tell me how that feels. What does that give you? Freedom. Total freedom to be what? Yourself. Thank you. You are free to just be the truth of you. You don't have to prove any existing box that you're worthy when you admit, I failed your box way in advance. Now you are free to just be yourself. And you can be, this box can throw a stone at you, and that box can throw a throw at you, and you can go, oh, man, I just, you hit me with your stone. Oh, my God, you're so right. You're so right. I really suck at that. 
I'll take the stone and I'll think about that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know what else is really cool about it? As soon as someone throws a stone at you and you go, oh, you're right, I'm a total failure at that. You're not defending yourself now. What happens when you start to say, hey, that's not true. I'm not bad. What are you doing with that person in the box? That throws the stone at you and says, you suck. You're a piece of shit. You're a failure, right? I'm throwing my stone. You should be, you should be doing things the way I do in my box. If you start engaging defensively, oh, you're basically validating that their box has worthy, worthy of confrontation and worthy of discussion. But if you admit, oh, I'm a failure, you're right, now what? I'm a failure and I don't internalize it. Gosh, you're right. With your system, I'm going to go to hell. I'm going to go out to outer darkness. You're right. That's the truth and I don't need to defend myself. <sighs> what does that mean? It means you don't have to internalize it as I'm so bad. As if it's a truth. It's the truth to their box. Yes. Relative to your system, I'm not fitting. That's true. You don't even need to defend it because based on their box, the truth is you don't fit. If you admit that, it means that you're free from being defined by it. It's no longer a true reflection of your worth unless you go into that box and believe it. Now that stone makes like you have to defend yourself. You have to fix it because the box that they're throwing it from, if you believe it, that means that you think that our box is worthy of worship. Hmm. Are you, con are you connecting with what I'm saying? Am I yeah. guiding yeah. you? Yeah. It's like, like, no. <laughs> like what? I've never looked at things that way, yeah. Well, this is why you paid me. This is what makes this hour what it is. You have to say, relative to every box that exists, I don't fit. That's the truth. That's what I say. Wave your white flag to every box and say, you're right, I'm a total failure relative to that. Yes, I don't fit. I, oh. Because in comparison to that box, you're very clear with what works for you. You may not like, you know, you may not want to have such tight, rigid constraints. You believe in a lenient, more organic, flowing system. Maybe you don't like the box. Maybe you like something that's a circle or a star and it can change and it can move. You don't want to have something that doesn't have grace or forgiveness. Right? I mean, if we yeah. really think about grace and forgiveness, don't you agree that that's relative to some box that doesn't have yeah. any room for change? It's finite. It's tiny. It is like yeah. black and white. You're either in it or you're out of it. There's no grace. Yeah. So you live with grace and say, I can change. I can have one belief and then learn and change my belief as I learn and I can become more aware. And I don't have to be defined by my lack of awareness or awareness from five years ago because I wasn't necessarily aware. I did the best I could. So now I know more. So my box is changing. I don't have a box anymore. I don't live in boxes. I can't afford to do that because now you you don't have room for growth and growth and there's no grace once you go into a box. So I admit relative to every single system I'm a complete failure. But isn't that relative to their system? Do you know that what that means? That means I'm a winner. I'm not failing at all because I'm not taking on their system. But relative to the system, you're right. I'm I'm going to hell. You're you're right. I don't drive the nicest car. Wow, that means I'm like really lower level human. Okay, cool. That You're right, I'm a failure. I don't have enough education. That's true. Relative to that, I really am insufficient. Ugh, that's right. You're right. It's like um, one of the reviews for my book, 
Um, it's uh -huh. a one star review, and, and I know I, I don't know if I've told you this before. You can go and you can read it. It's awesome. Actually, I liked the review because relative to their beliefs, it's so true. They gave me a one star because I encourage laboratory investigation. You know that means that you're 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 doing tests on animals. That is such uh -huh. an honorable view. How can I how can I argue with that one star? It's the truth. And and someone's beliefs around that, oh, I so have compassion. I I really do. I I get it. I I would give me a one star too. The whole book is about laboratory testing for science. Nah. I admit it. I am a failure in terms of that. That's true. One star. I so get it. And I so get it when someone says it's a two star. This is boring. It's repetitive. I so agree. Sure. But that's, I didn't do it for, I, I would have didn't write the book so it could be something that, you know, was fast, fast paced. I, I, I did it the way I thought it should be done. And, and so relative to all the boxes of stones people are throwing it to me, everybody's true. Everybody's right. And I'm a failure relative to everybody. So in that acceptance, I get freedom from caring. And I don't have to prove myself. Sure. I don't. So when you look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm a total failure relative to the beauty industry. Look at me. I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> Every single piece of food that I eat is a failure in some diet's mind. Eating, oh, yeah. eating based on biological hormonal rhythms is a total failure relative to someone that believes in, you know, constraints with food and timing. Totally. It's wrong. You're doing it wrong right now. It's true. Failure. There are people who would go to your wedding and think you should do it differently. Your wedding sucks compared to what they would do. Admit it. You're a failure. But... Isn't the way, isn't it, if it's your life and your wedding and it's your marriage, honor what you want and just accept the fact that other people might would might want it differently. That's, uh -huh. that, and they should do it different. They should. Right? Yes. This is what I mean when I say you have got to honor yourself. You have to honor this. If you don't honor this, you are left to defend yourself from every judgment out there. And you will feel like you have to work on accepting yourself. It's going to take work. You have to convince yourself you're a good person. Well, what, you know what it we're talking about is, easier. well, you're, what we're doing is we're discussing the, the meaning for you of what your self-worth is. Self-worth. That's what we're talking about. That you honor that you have worth no matter what type of failure some system says you are. That the worth that you have is, is more honorable than any system. And that you have grace from every system out there. You have it. It exists. You have to give it to yourself, though. You have to believe that the self we are talking about is worthy of grace from all systems. That you cannot afford to leave the, the honoring of yourself. Because once you do, you now have to focus on some system. You're not focusing on your own own guidance, your own real, your life, the truth. You now have to take on a personality or a role if you leave it. And that's what you've been doing. And that's why you're having such a struggle. Because you are you are continuing to take on these roles that don't feel right to the to the to the core. And and and, and I know, I believe that you don't feel <clears throat> You want to feel, you, it shouldn't be a struggle to feel that you're worthy and that you're honorable. It shouldn't. And I think the last severed 
it's like cutting an umbilical cord. You need to cut the umbilical cord to all systems and believe that the system you have is is honorable. Even if someone tells you it's not. Okay. You have to believe that. I can sit here and tell you this, but you have to feel it. You have to go, wow, okay. I am honorable and that frees me to be myself. And it frees me to be truthful to myself. And it frees you to develop. Truthfully. It's like telling the truth. In all environments, I'm going to tell the truth. This is this is me. I, this is what I woke up. This is my bed head. I mean, the video when you watch this, the, my hair, this is how I woke up. I have no makeup on. Oh, my God. I'm so unprofessional. <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. This is this. So we need to move on. We need to schedule the next session. And what I'm going to leave you with is the challenge of accepting yourself as is right now. Reject all of everything and tell yourself relative to everything that everybody says, I'm, 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 I'm a failure. It's true. And I'd rather have that failure because it gives me freedom to just be myself. All right. You should be able to breathe. Your shoulders should be dropping. And you should feel like nothing needs to be corrected. It does lighten the load. Mm -hmm. well, well, the load should be just the truth of you now. It's not the load of everybody else's truth. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to stop videotaping and we'll get scheduled.